Hello and welcome to Techie Chap. In today's episode, I'm going to be taking a look at Fedora 37. Join me after the intro to find out my thoughts. So here we are. This is Fedora 37 desktop. In fact, this is my Fedora 37 desktop. And if you are running Fedora 36, as you can tell, it's not really going to look that much different from the original Fedora 36. However, there have been a few small tweaks here and there. So installing Fedora Linux 37 was pretty simple. All I did was open up my software center down here, go to updates. As you can see, there's some more updates to run on my machine here and in the case of when I was running Fedora 36, I had this icon come up, which was Fedora Linux 37 available. And in fact, this was download. And once I'd clicked on download, which took uh, for me about five minutes, uh, then you get this restart and upgrade. And that took about 10 to 15 minutes. It restarted and took a while to install all the upgrade files. However, once it was upgraded, everything was fine on my laptop. I'm running it on my X1 Carbon Generation 3 laptop, so it's a little bit long in the tooth, but it runs Fedora 37 just fine. And yeah, everything works. Everything works absolutely fine. Uh, a couple of differences though, and here's a screenshot from my Fedora 36. Just take a note of that top bar there in the file manager. And as I bring up this file manager, you can see straight away that they've taken the uh, boxes out from the uh, little arrows here. And the same over here, they've taken the outline box away from here and here, and they've added outline circles around the close and minimize icons here. So that's kind of the only difference there. And they've made the um, side panels and the interior panels uh, slightly darker. So they've played around with the default theme there. In terms of icons, um, there's really not much difference there. As you can see, there's documents there, there's documents there, downloads, downloads. Those icons really are not different at all. I can't really see any difference at all between those icons. Right, so that was my desktop before uh, upgrading. And as you can see, it was the standard Fedora 36 wallpaper. Uh, really, there, there's not much to say in terms of the difference between these two as a desktop experience. They're very, very similar. Perhaps the biggest difference, though, is the notification tray in the top right. So previously on Fedora 36, you had this very nice notification tray popped out in its own little bubble. Um, and now the notification tray still pops out in its own bubble, but it's been squashed a little bit like the mini cars that you find on the road. They look to me anyway, like they've been slightly flattened. Um, and it seems to be a trend nowadays that things are getting flattened <laughs> to make them a little bit smaller. And that trend uh, is here in the GNOME uh, notification tray. But what's clever about this notification tray is they have actually introduced more functionality than the original. So what you will find here as new extra functionality is you can now take a screenshot directly from the notification tray. You also have completely redesigned buttons here. Um, that open out so that you can select Wi-Fi, for example, and they open out again for power profiles. And the whole thing sort of reshapes to incorporate that. And that's really nice. You also get a microphone level as well, uh, directly within this, whereas you didn't get that uh, before on the previous uh, tray. So some very nice little features there in the redesigned notification tray. 
other than a notification tray, Fedora really is behaving exactly the same way as it was before. Even this, uh, the calendar icon, really doesn't look any different, at least to me, uh, to the way it originally looked. So between 36 and 37, cosmetically, very little has changed. And functionally as well, very little has changed between the two. What Fedora does, and the reason why I run it day in and day out, is it offers a super stable experience and it kind of just works. Things like Steam, as you can see, I've got Steam installed down here. That just works. The games just work on, on Steam. It's a good option if you are a Linux gamer in terms of that kind of things just working and not having to fiddle around too much. However, in some ways, I hate Fedora. <laughs> that might come out as a bit extreme, but Fedora has a massive team. And one of the things that the Linux community as a whole is lacking is innovation. And I think there's about Ubuntu and Canonical as well. They're these teams are huge and the level of innovation that comes out of both of these teams actually for me and this is a somewhat challenging view I don't think is enough given the amount of people working on the project. There are some things that I admire Fedora, the Fedora team for and that in particular is being able to hold off on releasing a new system to ensure that it offers uh, complete stability when it does come out, which I think is a, a, an admirable stance to take. Uh, people were waiting for Fedora for a very long time, um, but actually I think it's admirable that they held off and didn't um, release Fedora, Fedora 37 until they were happy with it. But for me, there just isn't enough innovation in this release. What it gives you is the latest GNOME uh, tweaks, the things that have come to the latest version of GNOME and the GNOME experience. And of course, Fedora is somewhat restrained by that. But I just want something more. I want to see more innovation particularly from these bigger teams. At the moment, the Linux world seems to rely on the smaller teams and the single one-off developers to bring in uh, an innovation to the Linux desktop that they sort of look at and think, hey, we'll use that too, which is one of the amazing things about the Linux world and the open source world is that you can do that. However, I, I just expect more from these big teams, more innovation and more ways of doing things. For example, GNOME used to have something called GNOME Pi, which was uh, this interesting application switcher that, uh, in fact, I, I'll bring it up and show you. It was this sort of really interesting way of selecting applications. Let's see if I can bring it up here. GNOME Pi, there we go. Gnome Pi, let's bring that up, images. Here we go. And it was this interesting way of selecting applications, but it really hasn't been updated for a very long time. And it's a shame because innovations like this, whether they work or not, is one thing, but just being able to explore these type of application launchers and different types of ways of opening applications, seeing if the desktop can be made even more out of the way. I just think there could be more work done on that rather than sticking with the safe ideas that we have done for the last 10 to 15 years, which is either a Windows desktop experience or a Mac desktop experience. And I've been running these now for 10 to 15 years and to be honest, it gets a little bit tiring when they all look the same and all more or less function the same. Just want to see more innovation, particularly from these bigger teams. However, Fedora 37, it is super stable. 
It's the system that I run as my Linux system on this X1 Carbon day in, day out. And I run it because I can rely on it and I know what to expect from it. And I know that it will run all the things I need it to run. I also have a free BSD system as well, and that's running on another laptop. We can talk about that another day. But the Dora 37, what do I think of it? Well, in some ways, it's only the jump from 36 to 37. Perhaps I'm expecting too much from the Fedora team for something that is only one version release and isn't a major version release. Perhaps I'm expecting too much from the team. Could be. Uh, I've got to say, I've got to give it about three and a half out of five simply because I can't help but be a little bit disappointed with the level of innovation in this release. Sure, it supports more processors in the background. Yes, it has better support for memory and a lot more hardware is supported in the background. However, as I've said, there just isn't enough in this for me as a new release. Um, to be frank, it's a little bit boring. <laughs> um, and yeah, I, I rant over. I just want more innovation. But it, this is super stable. Uh, if you are a gamer, a Linux gamer, then Steam is just going to work for you. If you use Steam for your games, then that's going to be a great experience for you. Um, as you can see, memory usage is quite high on this. Uh, I'm running 4.3 gig at the moment but then I do have Chrome, Firefox open, uh, I've got the image viewer open and I've got OBS open as well um, but it is quite high on the memory usage um, generally um, as well so you can expect almost uh, if you're running Firefox and Chrome they're going to take up about a gig of memory at least when they're running. So three and a half out of five for Fedora 37. Very stable, quite a nice release, but just not enough innovation for me. Hope you've enjoyed this review and I hope I haven't stirred up too much controversy by uh, that remark. But hey, if you've enjoyed this review, um, then please click on like and subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks for watching.